All right, we are going through the New Testament. We are in John's Gospel. John the Beloved, as he was known. How do you like to be known as that? John the Beloved. Put your name there and then put the Beloved. You are loved by God. You are loved by God. So here we go. John chapter 4. John's Gospel. The man from heaven. Here he is. Now Jesus had learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Well, the Pharisees figured it out that Jesus is more popular than John, and they like to be the popular one. This is uh, this is junior high stuff. <laughs> oh man! And uh, Jesus hears about it. You know how does he hear about it? Because somebody's talking about it. Oh boy. Well, he is gaining more disciples than John. It's starting to grow this thing. And although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. That's kind of interesting. Jesus wasn't the one doing the baptizing, but his disciples were. And so he left for Judea, and he went, went back once more to Galilee. So what does Jesus do when there's gossip, when there's talk, when there's chatter, when there's talking behind your back, when there's momentum, and where there's drama growing? Uh, what does he do? He goes back to the Galilee, goes back to the, to the peaceful, quiet place there up in the Galilee, where he's going to do a lot of, lot of ministry. But he's leaving, he's leaving the urban areas. I'm going here to uh, the Galilee. He had to go through Samaria. Well, the people don't, uh, the first century Hebrew community, they don't like the Samaritans. Uh, reason being, uh, they had been exiled into Babylon some 600 years before, somewhere thereabouts. <clears throat> and uh, they began to uh, trickle back from Babylon and go back in, into the land. After 70 years, Jeremiah had prophesied that. And as they're going back, um, and as they're there, some of them are interbreeding. You see, these were people who it was very important for them to keep their national identity, to keep their bloodline who they were, for a lot of reasons. There's biblical reasons and other reasons as well. But um, those who did not keep themselves within their ethnic boundaries were not very well received by the, the rest of the Hebrew community. And so these Samaritans were sort of half-breeds. And as such, the Hebrew community, the Jewish community, really didn't want much to do with them. So, but because of their background, they still, they still had an understanding of God, worshiping God. So uh, they worshiped God in Mount Gerizim and, uh, you know, the rest of the Jewish community, they were, they were worshiping him in Jerusalem. And so they have their differences of location. Where do you worship? How do you worship? And they just weren't liked. Well, he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar. Where's that? Well, it's near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Mean much to you? Probably didn't mean much to me. Meant an awful lot to them. They knew exactly where that was. <clears throat> you know, you you know how this is where you live. People tell you, oh, yeah, it's, it's where the old department store used to be or whatever. Well, they knew where it was. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus was tired from his journey, and he sat down at the well, and it was about noon. So it's hot out. He's tired. He's sitting down at the well. This is a well that's well known. Jacob's well is there. Samaritan woman comes by to draw some water. And uh, when the Samaritan woman came to draw the water, <clears throat> Jesus asked her, could you give me a drink? Could you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. And so Jesus is sitting there by himself. And this woman comes and Jesus asks for a drink. And the Samaritan woman said to him, you, you're a Jew. And I'm a Samaritan woman, Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? Because the Jews don't associate with the Samaritans. Hmm. So, you know, first century Jewish men, it was a men's world, uh, they used to pray and thank God. Thank God that I wasn't born a Gentile. Thank God that I wasn't born a slave. <clears throat> thank God that I wasn't born a woman. Well, um, the Samaritans aren't Gentiles because they're half Jewish, but they kind of fit into that category. 
unusual for Jesus to be talking to this Samaritan woman. It would not be liked on by the rest of the community. So Jesus answered and he said, If you knew the gift of God and who it was to ask for your drink, you would have asked him and he would give you living water. Ha <laughs> ha, he's going to up the ante with this lady. You would, I, I can give you living water. You can give me just this water. I give you living water. Sir, she said, you don't have anything to draw with and that well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well to drink from himself? And also his sons and his livestock drank from here. Are you greater than Jacob? We, we, we love Jacob. And that's, so this shows that the Samaritan people saw their heritage going all the way back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even though the rest of the Jewish community didn't like him. Sounds like some of our families, doesn't it? <clears throat> of our relationships, some of the things that are going on. So Jesus answers her. He says, everyone that drinks from this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become a spring of water welling up onto eternal life. And the woman said, oh, give me some of that water. I, that's what I want. Give me some of it. I want some of that action. Give me some of that water so that I won't get thirsty. And I won't have to keep coming here to draw water. That'd be great. And he told her, he said, go and go call your husband and come back. What's that about? She said, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, you're right when you say you don't have a husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands. <clears throat> and the man you're now with, he's not your husband. What you've said is quite true. He knows everything about this lady. Everything about her. He knows everything about you. He knows everything about me. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. And so now she gets spiritually, she goes spiritual on him. And she said, our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. Most of this saying their ancestors, the Jewish people. But the you Jews, so your Jewish heritage, you Jews, claim the place we must worship is in Jerusalem. But we we worship here. And Jesus said, Woman, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Now what's going to happen here is that Jesus is going to have the deepest theological conversation he has with anybody in the New Testament, Pharisees, Sadducees, his disciples, uh, pe just people asking him questions, with a Samaritan woman, a sort of outcast to the first century Jews. And Jesus is having a very deep spiritual conversation with her, theological conversation with her, because he's going to talk about the big questions. And these are the questions people ask today. Well, where do you worship? How do you worship? You know, who is God and what is God like? Well, Jesus is going to answer these questions with this woman. And his disciples never asked him these questions, neither did the Pharisees. And he said, believe me, <clears throat> time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain or in Jerusalem. He said, you Samaritans worship what you don't know, and we worship what we do know, for salvation comes from the Jews. So, you know, you've got this thing mixed up a little bit, but we've got the scriptures and we know, we know who God is. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers, which I think this woman will be one of those, where the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. So how do you worship God? You worship him in spirit and you worship him in truth. So the Holy Spirit guides us into, into worship. And truth guides us into worship. So we have the word and we have the spirit. And we always need to keep it that way. For those are the kind of worshipers that the Father seeks. God is looking for worshipers, those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And then he gets into the nature of God. He said, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. And then the woman said, I know you're the, I know that the Messiah called the Christ, he's coming. And when he comes, he'll explain everything to us. And Jesus said, I, the one speaking to you, am he. I'm the Messiah. <laughs> Reveals himself to this woman. And uh, his disciples come back and they're asking, you know, what's going on? And, uh, you know, this, they, they don't, they don't, they don't understand it. And then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything. Could this be the Messiah? And they came out of the town and made their way towards him. And so she becomes an evangelist. Uh, and Jesus tells him that, you know, my food is doing the, 
the will of the Father. And then it goes on and it says, many Samaritans believe. This woman goes out, becomes an evangelist, having had this encounter with Jesus. She goes out and gets everybody and they come and a whole bunch of them believe. This is just such a great story of this woman becoming a gatherer. So become a gatherer. Go out and get your friends. You don't need to know a lot. All you need to know is that he's told you everything about your life. You know that if you've met Jesus, he knows everything about you. So just go and say, hey, I ha I know somebody who knows everything about me, knows everything about you. You ought to get to know him. You ought to come out and see him. His name is Jesus. And boy, does he love you. So uh, the Gospel of John, we didn't do every passage here, but uh, God loves you. And uh, this is such a great story. Hey, talk to you soon. Love you.